Brother Lavercia, we can't hear you, brother. I'll just pray. Okay. Our Heavenly Father, we approach you this very moment and thank you so very much for allowing us to be gathered in the different parts of the world. We ask, dear Father, as we study your holy teachings, you'll be with each and every one of us. Oh Lord, we know the reasons why you have called each and every one of us to this task, and so that we may fulfill the very role of the holy calling that thou bestowed upon us, and worthy as we stand before you. But oh Lord, we know that it was you that have chosen each and every one of us to continue in our faith in worshiping you inside the true church. Father in heaven, we are so happy that you have granted us this great blessing. You have given us these blessings into our lives. And because of this, oh Father, we will always be inspired to always worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask of you, dear Father, in our studies, may we be able to experience your presence. May we be edified in our faith. May we be able to be stronger and stronger every day in the midst of all what's happening in this world, especially in the lives of your people who have been oppressed, starting from the family of the late executive minister. You know, all our present situations, dear Father, we ask that you please bless those who have been oppressed. Help them, dear Father, that they will be able to overcome all these tests that will come in their lives. You know, Father, on behalf of those that may have been blessed in this way, that have been chosen like this, to continue in this mission, dear Father, may we have a generous heart in helping our brethren who are totally in need of your help. Especially we know that this coming Sunday is our Thanksgiving. We ask, dear Father, that you prepare each and every one of us that we would be able to experience your presence and will be edified in our faith. Dear Lord Jesus, throughout our studies of your words, that is to be proclaimed. May you please be with all of us. You will please bless each and every one of those that are going to listen to your teachings and our Father's words that are able to go on fervently serving you and our Father. Father, we ask everything with the forgiveness of our sins. In the name of the Lord, Savior Jesus. Amen. Okay, uh, beloved brethren, we are deeply sorry of uh, what happened. Um, since you already listened, I mean, you stay there for about a few minutes. I won't make the lesson that long, okay? All right, let's uh, start already. Many people believe that the most fortunate persons in the world are those who possess great wealth, such as gold, silver, and other riches. And so they toil and strive hard to attain these things by all means and at all costs. Now, not a few family relationships has been ruined because of quarrels over wealth. We have heard of how some siblings fight over the inheritance left by their parents. There are also some who were driven by greed, use deception, to seize the properties of others. And if we are to analyze and trace the root cause of the crimes being committed nowadays, such as holdup, bank robbery, theft, murder, bribery, and etc., cetera, uh, we can say that the most of them are motivated by the love of money and material wealth. Indeed, many people have been blinded by the sparkle of wealth, that they are willing to risk even their own lives just to acquire such. But there is, you know, something more important than all that were mentioned, the wealth of this word, silver and gold in this world. There's something more important than all of these things. And it is only 
but something that is something that we should be joyful of if we have that something that we are going to talk about that is worth more than gold, silver, and all the wealth in this world, which is more precious than silver and gold, according to the Holy Scriptures. Now let's begin our studies in the book of Psalms 119, 72. The law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. Which is more precious than silver and gold? As what we have read, the law from your mouth. Whose mouth? The mouth of our Lord Almighty God. So these are God's laws. That is more precious than the thousands of pieces of silver and gold. As we quote even in Job 23, 25 of today's English version, let Almighty God be your gold and let him be silver piled high for you. You see, when we make God first in everything in our lives, brothers and sisters, we are sure that we have the greatest wealth here on earth. Now, why are the words and commandments of God more precious than silver and gold? What can we obtain by those who obey them? Let's now read in Psalms 19, 8, 10 through 11. The laws of the Lord are right, and those who obey them are happy. The commands of the Lord are just and give understanding to the mind. They are more desirable than the finest gold. They are sweeter than the purest honey. They give knowledge to me, your servant. I'm rewarded for obeying them. Why is it that the words of God are treated more important than gold, silver, and wealth of this earth? Because we know that the words of God brings us happiness. How does it bring happiness to us? When we follow and obey our God, we start to experience the closeness of our God. Him being near to us is something that is undescribable, that money or wealth cannot be compared to. Because once we start to experience the presence of the Almighty God, we know that it is making us happy, gives us understanding, and also gives us reward. What is the greatest reward that one can acquire from this? If you read John 524, let's read. I am telling you the truth. Those who hear my words and believe in him who sent me have eternal life. They will not be judged, but have already passed from death to life. According to what we have read, brethren, which is this that the Bible teaches us as a greatest reward that we can acquire through means of obedience to God's teachings and his commandments? Eternal life life. In fact, if we quote even in Job 23, 12, I have not departed from his commandments of his lips. I have treasured the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. Those servants of God, who have learned to really give importance to his words or to his teachings, we can see how they value the words of our Lord Almighty God. Was this not also the reason why we as members of the true church of Christ, the one that God continued to set apart people in this last days as the very small remnant, as the true church of Christ, is this not the reason why that we have been able to attain this great privilege to continue in our faith? Why? Did we not prove or show to our God that we are willing to go to that extent of obedience to his words because we know that his words are so valuable to us? It brings us closest, closer to our God. Not only that, we even treasure his words more than our necessary food. Why? Because we made God as our gold. 
as what the Bible makes mention. How do you treat wealth, brothers and sisters? If you have it, don't you strive to take care of it and try to all the more uh, find ways in how it, it, it could also accumulate more? But what we're speaking here is not about the wealth of this world. What we're speaking here is the greatest wealth that we have. Our greatest wealth is our God. And if we have our God, then we have everything. Beloved brothers and sisters, and most of all, that reward that we are striving to uh, attain is eternal life. You know, on the day of judgment, the account, your bank account will not be the one that will be open, beloved brethren. Why? Because if you read, we quote in Zephaniah 118, neither your silver nor your gold cannot save you on the day of the Lord's wrath. So on judgment day, it is not how much money you have uh, put away here on earth that will be the basis of your salvation. In fact, what is it that can save us from the wrath of God? If we quote Romans 5, 8, and 9, we can be saved from the wrath of God because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know which was the church that was purchased and redeemed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Was this not the church of Christ? And that's the reason why we are so happy to be amongst those who may have been blessed to be continuing, continuing our faith as true members of the church of Christ. Why is it that if one will all just come to a conclusion to understand and follow the teachings of the Lord Almighty God, why will this individual be blessed? Let's read James 1, 22 and 25. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. You know, if we just continue quoting that verse in 26 and 27, what are some of the things that will prove all the more our faith or our being true members of the church of Christ? Let's just proceed, uh, quote the quote of reading that verse. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So if you really look intently of what the passage is speaking about, of how we can all the more be blessed, is to help the orphans, to help the widows, to help those who have been oppressed, beloved brethren. In this way, our lives will be blessed because if this really is one of the callings that we have received from the Lord Almighty God, let us fulfill it. Was this not one thing that God wanted his servants within the institutions to fulfill and do? But did they fulfill it? Let's just uh, quote that verse in 117 of Isaiah. Learn to do good. Seek justice. You rebuke, rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Your princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves bribes and follows after rewards. They do not defend the fatherless, nor does the cause of the widow come before them. Now, God expected the leaders of the institution to seek justice, to do what is good, and to help the orphans, the fatherless, and also listen to the plea of the widow. But did they obey and follow? They did not. So why is it that they cannot be amongst those who will be blessed? Because they are not the one following the words of God. Is it really possible to say that you may be considered as God's people, but yet you're not 
amongst those who will be blessed by God? And why is it that there are those who may be saying that they are God's people, but they are not blessed by the Lord Almighty God? Let's read in Zechariah, the chapter 7, 11 through 12. But my people... Take note, God is speaking about his people who are his people in these last days. Aren't we the members of the church of Christ, God's people? But what is it that God wants to make these people understand? Those who don't want to follow our commandments. But my people stubbornly refuse to listen. They close their minds and made their hearts as hard as rock. Because they would not listen to the teachings which I sent through the prophets who lived long ago. I became very angry. So why is it that there are some who may be classified as God's people, but yet they are not being blessed by God? Because in order to be blessed by God is to obey his commandments and his teachings. And one of the commandments of God in proving that you belong to the true religion is to help those who have been oppressed, the widow, the fatherless, as we have read a while ago. But yet, there are those who are hard-headed, uh, those who are stubborn, and that's why they, their hearts was made as hard as rock. Why is it that it became as hard as rock? Because of sin, instead of the words of God being cherished in their hearts to be followed, they rather disobey and transgress what God wants them to do. And because of this, they continue to suffer the anger of the Lord Almighty God. None of us would ever want to suffer the anger of our God. Now, who is one of the good example that the Bible gave to us? As one that was tempted in every way. But what did he do so that he will still be able to obey God's teachings and commandments? Let's turn to Matthew 4, 3, 4, 8. 9 and 11. Then the devil came to him and said, If you are God's son, order these stones to turn into bread. But Jesus answered, The scripture says, Human beings cannot live on bread alone, but needs every word that God speaks. Then the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the world and all the greatness. All this I will give to you, the devil said. If you kneel down and worship me, then the devil left Jesus and the angels came and helped him. But if we continued to read, beloved brothers and sisters, whatever happened uh, to that point that when our Lord Jesus Christ said that the Father should be the only one that should be worshipped and he alone shall be worshipped. And so... That's the time that the devil left our Lord Jesus Christ. What was one of the things that he was tested on? Food, right? He said, if you were the son of God, what are you to make of that stone? Pandisal. What's pandisal? That's bread in Tagalog. See, you're getting hungry again, beloved brethren. They say that uh, the brethren from the Philippines are very clean because uh, they would like to uh, clean their bread first before eating it. They dip it in the coffee, right? Pandisal. Then after that, they also drink the coffee. That's how clean they are. Oh, let's go back. How did we get to that uh, subject? Because we're speaking of bread, but our Lord Jesus Christ makes mention, man shall not live by bread alone, but Every word that proceeds from the mouth of our God. So our Lord Jesus Christ gave so much importance to God's teaching. And when he was being offered all the honor and fame in this world, as the devil really uh, owns all these things, you see how he deceives many people. Be careful. You might be deceived, beloved brethren. We don't want to be deceived, brothers and sisters. But... Our Lord Jesus Christ, instead of worshiping him, he said that God should be the one that should only be worshipped, brothers and sisters. 
Now, we know from the start, even from Adam and Eve, uh, the, the devil uh, used the serpent in trying to deceive Adam and Eve, and which he succeeded. He also strove to try to deceive, uh, deceive our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you start to see that if there are brethren, even if they are your relatives, even if they are, you can say probably ministers, officers um, that are being used in trying to deceive you, beloved brothers and sisters, open up your eyes and understanding and see if the words of God is being fulfilled into their lives and into our lives, then you would be able to clearly say that what you're following is really God's teachings or his words. Now, uh, if at that individual strive to teach you otherwise in contrary to what God wants you to understand and to follow, you must not listen to that individual because that individual is being used by the enemy of God. Who's the enemy of God? Satan, the devil, right? Who will be blinded or deceived by Satan? Second Corinthians 4.4. 4. The God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Who is the one that can blind the minds of the people? The devil, the God of this world. What is his purpose? So that he would be able to deceive these people. So that the gospel of the light of the gospel will not shine in them. What is the gospel in the first place? If we quote Romans 1.16. We know that it's written there that the gospel is the righteousness of God for our salvation. And of course, the enemy works hard. is like a roaring lion seeking someone that he can destroy, as written in 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9. And so we can see how the enemy of God works so hard because his time on earth is only a little bit time only so he is very angry as written in the book of revelation so brothers and sisters when we know that the enemy is so angry he would not focus on the more of the church in this last days and that is why we can see why things happened to the daughter of zion it was attacked right and the leaders themselves did not submit to what God wanted. But because of that, because there are many who follow them, God still continued to set aside a very small remnant. And that very small remnant, we know, there is also the daughter of Zion, the church of Christ. In this last days, we are the one who continued as being members of the church of Christ. Why? Because we value the commandments of God. So if our other brethren in the institution will also value the words of God written there, if you are really closely to look at what the Bible teaches in the prophecy, you would be able to conclude that you would follow God instead of man. That's also written in the book of Acts 5, 28, 29. So if there is a point, a crossroad when it comes into your lives, who should be followed, man or God? It should be God because we will give an account and our works on the day of judgment to our God when the books of works are open, Revelations 20, 12. So, so that we will not be deceived by the enemy of our God. What should the servants of God firmly believe in so that they will not be deceived? Let's read 27, 13 of Psalms. I'll read. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living so that we will not be deceived by our enemies or by the devil himself using his instruments in deceiving people. Beloved brethren, what is it that we should always uh, look at? The goodness of the Lord Almighty God. Let me ask you this, beloved brethren. Is God good? Has God has done so many things for us? This year is about to end. We have Thanksgiving this coming Sunday. 
Think of all the goodness and kindness that God has given to you in your lives, to your family, to your children, or to the husband and wife, or to your loved ones. Try to reflect so that on the day of Thanksgiving, we would be able to gather ourselves and say to our God, because we have treated you as our wealth, our gold, our piled up silver up high. And that's why we are willing to sacrifice everything, even our lives, just to follow you. We're willing, beloved brethren, to go to that route that we have to suffer oppression, persecutions, and all hardships just to prove our loyalty and our faithfulness towards God. And because God saw that in us, he has individually chosen us to continue in this task of being true faithful members of the church. Beloved brethren, let it always be instilled in your hearts and in your minds that God will be your wealth. And if God is always your wealth, you would not allow anyone to take that wealth from you. How would you prove to God that he is the greatest wealth you have in life? Through obedience to his words, to his teachings, and his commandments. So our question, what should be the quality of those who trust in the goodness of God? For them not to be deceived by the devil. 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So what is one of the qualities that we should possess so that we will not be deceived by the devil? We have to have this criteria of uh, being very patient. Wait, I say, on the the Lord, the Bible says, is that all we must be of good courage. Why? Because there are so many things that could make you depressed, beloved brethren, especially in this year. So many things have happened in our lives throughout this year. Probably you probably could say this is one of the worst years that you probably may have gone through. But if you don't have courage, you will lose heart. If you don't have faith in your God and no trust in him, you will not be able to go on in your faith. But why is it that we go on? Why is it that we continue? Why is it that we remain? Not because we are strong on our own, not because we are courageable on our own, but it is God who strengthens us. He's the one that provides us the strength. But how can we get that strength? If we treat him as our God, that we would follow his commands. And if we make him like our greatest wealth, for sure, you will always be close to God. You could be far from your parents. You could be far from your loved ones. You could be far from everything else. But never have we wanted to be far from God. We always wanted in our lives that God will always be with us. And even if we have to go through this windy road and is filled with all hardships and troubles, as long as God is on our side, as long as God is always there, really there's nothing for us to be afraid of. Really there's nothing for us to really say that we should be depressed because God will always be there. And so how do we prove to our God that we are true faithful members of the true church of Christ. Romans 12, 1, rather Matthew 27, 4. Let's read. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek, 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. What is one of the criteria that is to be found among those who treat God as their greatest wealth on earth? They always desire for the worship service in gatherings as we desire to attend this coming Sunday. Do you know that the one that really looks for us on the day of our worship, if you read the book of John 4, 23 and 24, God is the one that seeks the true worshiper. Who do you think is true in this last days to God's calling? Was it not us who did not know what's going to happen to our lives? We do not know that this route that we were to take will be so perilous and filled with all kinds of danger. But yet, because we believe in God, because we had faith in our God, we were able to withstand all these things because of the help of the loving God. And so, what is this thing that we should never forget or forsake? our worship services talking about a true worship before the sight of god what is the acceptable worship that is to be offered to him and how should it be done romans 12 1 and to i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy acceptable to god which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect of perfect will of God so according to what we have just read what is this true worship that God seeks from us it's not only the time that when we gather in worship on the weekend beloved brethren it's how we conduct our lives every day before the sight of God how is it that we offer to God a true worship to him by offering ourselves as a living sacrifice when you say we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice no longer our will is to be done but the will of our god how is this done we do not conform to the things of this world so whatever this world offers as long as we know it's against god's teaching and his will we don't conform to that we conform to god's teachings and commandments by means of obedience to his word and his laws and because of this what does god give his servants who will worship him in truth for their spiritual strength ephesians 3 16 to 17 that he would grant you according to the richness of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you may be rooted and grounded in love what is this that god will provide for those who will give considerations to his teachings and his commandments in obedience to his laws and commandments well he will be the one to strengthen us to strengthen our inner man is this not true that we need the strength Sometimes we feel spiritually drained out. Sometimes we really don't know where to turn. Because some may have lost their jobs. Some may have lost their homes. Some may have lost their loved ones through this COVID or this pandemic. Some may be sick. Some are disheartened. But brothers and sisters, do you know? When you continue to obey God's teachings and commandments, you are strengthened. You are edified by God. May our God be able to edify you. May our God strengthen you in times when you feel very weak, when you feel so lonely, when you feel with uh, the anxieties and depressions on this life. Always understand that there is God who would be able to strengthen you. And how would it be possible that the strength that God will provide in our hearts would be granted? Revelations 3.20, I read, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come 
into him and dine with him and he with me. What is this one thing that our Lord Jesus Christ is asking of us so that our God would be able to give us the spiritual strength that he will send the spirit of his son into our hearts as written in Galatians 4, 6, we, that was quoted from. Beloved brethren, is to open our hearts. Our Lord Jesus Christ is knocking at to open our the door of our hearts. Beloved brethren, would you not let him in? Are you tired with all that you have gone through, especially for this year? There are so many things probably we would not be able to mention, but you know, and God knows what you went through. God knows what you are going through. God knows everything. Really, we cannot hide anything from God because God knows all things. First John 3.20 So when you feel, how is it that you would be able to feel that you will be strengthened in the midst of all this persecution, hardships, and all troubles and trials that you experience in this life? Let's read in 2 Corinthians 12.9 through 10. Let's read here. Excuse me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That's why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So brothers and sisters, when is this? How would it be possible that we would be strong when we are at the brick of point of our lives that we are suffering from all kinds of pains that make us weak in this life? In truth, beloved brethren, like what Apostle Paul has mentioned, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Do you know when you feel that time of losing your hope? That's the time that you need God in Christ. That's the time that God will send the Spirit of His Son to unify you and strengthen you. And you would be able to say, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardship, in persecutions, and difficulties. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Beloved brothers and sisters, trust in the words of God. This is what you need now. All of us need God in this life. The world is not getting any better. But when we have God, really you don't have to worry about so much. Because God will be the one to provide us his blessing. So those who always experience the power, especially in the worship service that are done, will be spiritually strong because of the strength. They can withstand all hindrances and surmount all kinds of trials, persecutions, hardships, and sufferings. They will not be overcome by the wickedness of this world or by anything or anyone in this life. And they will never be separated from the true faith. When we say true faith, you already know that, beloved brethren. What matters to them is that they are active, true members of the church of Christ until the end. Because they consider their election as something much more valuable than gold and silver or any other wealth. And we, as small as we are in the sight of man's sight or in the sight of our God, we know that God loves us. We know that we are loved by God. And that's the reason why you should be happy that you will continue to go on faithfully worshiping Him so that 
on judgment day you will receive what you have stood for the words of god you will be given your eternal life this is our lesson we'll, let's stand and let's pray our father in heaven we thank you so very much for helping us to understand how we should treat your teachings and commandments how your words are so valuable to us it gives us all a more a greater picture in our lives how and we will be able to be able to be successful in this life because if we treat you as our gold and silver piled up high we know nothing would be able to separate our love from you We know that you will always be followed no matter what. But even with all this, we admit to you, O oh God, that we failed you in so many ways. But yet you did not discipline us to the point of rejecting us. Maybe we have suffered your punishment. Maybe we experience other trials in life. But your purpose is to show to us that you want us to repent. That you want us to obey, that you want us to follow, because what really counts, oh Father, at the end of all things, if we are to face you on the day of judgment, when you are to provide the promised reward for salvation, we will stand before you, oh God. We ask that on that day, may we be worthy. Of all our sacrifices, of all that we labor to join for, all that we want, dear God, is to spend our eternity with you in the holy city, where there will be no more sickness, there will be no more problems, there will be no more persecution. Dear Lord Jesus, may you please look down upon your people. This coming Sunday, we will have our Thanksgiving. If you really look, this kind of life, especially this year, is filled with kind of hardships, financial hardships. How would it be that we could offer something to our God? Bless us materially, dear Lord, so that on that day, For the cause that you have given to us is to help those who have been oppressed, to listen to the plea of the widow, the fatherless, and the orphans. Oh Lord, we will fulfill what is expected from us. We are not wealthy, but we will try our best to offer to our God that will be worthy and acceptable. To be amongst those whose offerings will be accepted. To be used for a holy purpose. For the calling that you have granted to us. Dear Father in heaven, we believe you have heard our prayers and supplications. You will bless those who are sick. You will cure them from their ailments. Some of them are far away from their loved ones. Really, they have no one. But they have you. And since you are there, if it's not too much to ask, heal those who have been afflicted with sicknesses, with the life and truth we have, who are used in worshiping you and honoring your precious name. Dear Father, we ask everything through means of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.